everybody, it's TR again. And today, I'm going to do something a little educational. I'm going to do a video on square guitars, what I know and what you need to know. Okay, so I'm not a complete expert. Probably not even a sort of expert. Well, maybe I am a sort of expert. I bought a lot of guitars. I have a lot of guitars and I've learned things and I would like to share what I've learned. And one of the big things I've learned is all Squire guitars are not created equal. There's a wide range of quality. Some are really good. Some are pretty poor. What you need to know is what's the right one for you. And then I'm going to try and help with that today. Currently, currently, what I believe is available out there, although with uh, all this COVID and things, supplies for stuff, it's hard to say what's actually out there, but what I believe is out there now, you'll have your bullet, which is your entry level, and they're generally pretty poor. They're very inexpensive, but they're not great guitars. Uh, exception to every rule. I happen to be playing a bullet and this one is a great guitar. I'll get to that. Uh, next would be your Affinity Series, which they're better. They have better features. They're still nowhere near like on par with some made in Mexico Strat, but which would be a, a real Fender, but they're better. Um, there used to be the standard series and I don't know if they're even still making the standard series to be honest because I haven't found any for sale online so they may not be. Then you get to the ones that are pretty good, actually really good. You get the uh, Vintage Modified, which I've owned one of and they're very good. Um, my current Vintage Modified is in pieces right now. Um, I, I'm actually have a fen or actual fender neck on the body from it. That's how good it was. Same specs as the Maxi bodies. Okay, um, bullets and affinities, the bodies are thinner. They're not only made with um, lesser quality woods, but the bodies are thinner. Once you get up to the vintage modified um, and then the classic vibe, which is the top of the heap ones right now, um, the specs are pretty much all the same. Um, some of the cheaper ones, I have been told, like the bullets may have thinner nut width, thinner neck. Um, I've heard them referred to as toy guitars. Not so much with the vintage modified and, and the classic vibe. They will give you the right specs. They'll be a full-size guitar in every way. Uh, the affinities I can't speak to, I don't own one. And the reason I haven't owned one is because they're not as good a quality. So then you ask, why are you sitting here playing a bullet? Well, this particular bullet isn't your average bullet. Um, there's, there's no rules. Uh, this bullet was made in Indonesia. The really cheap bullets are made in China. There's a pretty good giveaway right there. Look at the back of the headstock and see where it says it's made. Because if it's made in China, I say don't buy unless, and it's a big unless because the classic vibe, which are now at the top of the heap, are made in China. They were making an actual real Fender guitar in China. Yes, they were, believe it or not, it's called the Modern Player. I never cared for them. You could spot them right off because the maple on the neck had this orangish tint to it, and I just never cared for them, but they were very affordable. You'd be looking and you'd be like, that's a real Fender and that's only around $400. Coincidentally, the, the classic vibes are around $400. I'm thinking it's the, the same guitars. They just now say Squire. I think Fender smartened up and said, we better not put Fender on, on the headstock on this guitar anymore. Um, anyways, back to my point. This particular bullet was made in Indonesia. Now bullets, You'll see them like on blowout sales at Christmas for $89, $99, maybe $130 range in through there, depending on what features and stuff. They have them in strats, they have them in tallies, they'll have various ones. Um, this particular one was $180. So are you crazy, $180 for a bullet? Well, it's made in Indonesia. This is not a bullet neck. 
the this neck is nice it is smooth that's why i bought it i picked it up and grabbed the neck i was like holy cow uh full size knot and i will show you a comparison of this with my 1992 made in mexico strat and you will see that not only is it not with the same you will see it's the same nut material it's what they call a synthetic bone it's not plastic um there's all different kinds of you know like plastics they could use for a knot or composites <coughs> or whatever um the really cheap ones will say PVC, polyvinyl chloride, which is very much plastic. It's like what your sewer pipes are made out of. But this is synthetic bone. It isn't, I won't say it's as good as Tusk, but it's, it's, it's along the same lines. So not width is the same, not material the same. I measured at 21st fret, pretty much the same. So yeah, not a bullet neck. The dead giveaway for the cheap ones that you don't want are the tuning machines. I'll show you here. now. Uh, the tuning machines that will come on the Squires are good. They're not great, they're good. Um, they're sealed die cast. If you see sealed die cast, it's probably going to be a pretty good Squire. That's what you want to look for. Um, covered tuners, stay away. Danger warning. Um, tuning instability, um, jumpy tuning. Some of the very old vintage tuners used to have covers over the gears so they're trying to go for that look but I mean unless it's an expensive vintage tuner if you see a covered tuner stay away um, you want sealed die cast um, that said <laughs> exception to every rule the vintage modified the neck I have I'll show you a picture of that this type of covered tuner is very good so I'll show you the two covered tuners I'll show you good I'll show you bad um, Anyhow, the die casts that come on these will get you by. They work. Um, I replaced mine because they're not really pro quality. They don't have the tuning accuracy I'm used to. So, <laughs> I replaced this one with a set of fender tuners. <clears throat> it's tricky. There are little posts that go in holes on the back that hold these in. And they pretty much copied them for the squires, except for the specs aren't the same. So it's not a drop-in replacement. You gotta plug and redrill the holes. There's a little work involved. I did it, because I like to work on my guitars. And I bought this obviously because I like it. It's FSR, Fender Special Run. It's because of the color. It is a really nice color. It's got my own classic um, relicking on here. The way you're supposed to do it, accidentally. It's a boo-boo, <laughs> folks. I don't mess them up on purpose, but it did by accident. Um, <clears throat> dice knobs to look cool but all the electronics on this have been changed out um cts pots i can't remember if it's, if it's an oak griggs or a crl switch i put in but pro quality switch um there's an orange drop cap in here there's a switchcraft jack in here this pickup yeah it's a duncan hot rail for telly okay i didn't spend $90 on a pickup for a $180 guitar. I had the $90 pickup sitting in a box and had nothing to do with it. I saw a $180 guitar that I picked up and said, wow, I love the neck on that. And then the light bulb went off and here we are, okay? Um, another feature is this is the, the pickup that came on it, by the way, is good. There's nothing wrong with it. It was a quality Tele pickup, which is probably another step above an actual $100 bullet. Um, this, You'll notice there's adjusting screws on here. I don't think the affinities even have that. I think you got to get up into the higher end. Uh, the other ones, what you have to do if you want to change the height of that pickup is you got to take your pick guard off and get in there. Um, another plus feature on this is on the back, there's ferrules. It's string through. <laughs> These are not bullet features. So like I said, there's exceptions to every rule. So stay away from the bullet unless it's made in Indonesia. And if it's made in Indonesia, you could have a gem that you could work with. It would be a great... A great beginner guitar for somebody learning one of the Indonesia ones. Stay away from the China bullets. Okay, that's that one. Now what am I on to? I am going to be, you give me one second here. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> and I have another Squire. And um, if you're shopping for used, the used market, um, the pecking order that I gave you before, well, prior to that, what the pecking order was, it was a little more basic. Um, 
there was the Bullet, which is still the very cheap one, the Affinity, which... Then there was the Standard, and the Standards were pretty pretty good quality. I mean, they weren't made in Mexico, but they're pretty good quality. They had those die-cast tuners that I talked about, and um, they were okay. And above that, what used to be their top-of-the-line Squire was this little beauty. This is known as the Deluxe. You'll see it's got a two-point trim. They were trying to make it like back when Fender had the Deluxe before they revamped what they were calling their line of guitars. Um, this here, I'm here to tell you, if I was blindfolded, I have a 2010, I'm going to show you a comparison along with it, made in Mexico, a black Strat. If I was blindfolded, I would not be able to tell which one of these I'm holding. Uh, aesthetically, the black one, the finish on the back of the neck and stuff, the maple, well, fingerboard and everything is a little nicer, it's shinier, it's prettier, um, the wood's prettier. But to the feel, <laughs> I can't tell the difference. The, the side of this fingerboard is even rolled. Now, your mileage may vary. A friend ordered one of these in white, and it was nowhere near as nice. I had to do a lot of work on it for him to get it to play good. So your mileage may vary, but from what I've seen, the Daphne Blue, I bought this because of another YouTuber channel, Daryl Braun, had one of these. It was just raving about how good it was, and that's why I ordered this one, and he did not steer me wrong. It's one of my favorite little guitars. There again, disclaimer, I've done things to it. It comes with the same sealed die-cast tuners. I've replaced mine with Godo. They're not that expensive. They're like six and a half dollars a piece. So, you know, it depends. Um, they don't have the two pins. There's a screw. I had to drill extra holes for that. But, And I also have replaced um, the electronics because that's what, what I do. But as is, there was nothing wrong with it. They, these came with Duncan Design pickups. Um, they sounded fine. Um, the, like I said, the neck and the fret work was flawless. There has been no leveling or dressing on this. It's playing as it came, same with the bullet, I was just playing, it didn't touch the frets, which is an important thing on, a, on an entry level guitar. Um, Cause if it's for somebody that's a beginner and just learning, you know, oh, I'm just learning to play guitar. I think I will do a fret level and dress. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Um, it's kind of an advanced thing. So if you did find one of these, I would suggest buy it. Um, there again, we're up to the, the exact full-size body. Now, the bullet telly that I was showing you does have the thinner body. That is the one bullet feature it retains. Not a bad thing. It's light. It doesn't neck dive. It's light. It's comfortable. I like it. I don't believe in tone wood. I don't think the fact that that body's thinner matters one iota. That said, though, when you get up at this level, these babies are full-sized in every way. The parts are interchangeable. You can put a regular fender neck on one of these bodies, vice versa. You can switch everything out. They got to the point now where the screw holes are even in the same place. Um, God bless CNC machines, right? So... <laughs> Of course, it sounds great. I've got replacement pickups in here, but I'm holding a guitar. I have to play it, right? So then again, my point is squares aren't all the same. You can't go by any rules that bullets suck because if you get the Indonesian ones, they don't. You can't go by rules anyone made in China sucks because currently the, the classic vibe ones are made in China and they're the top of the line and they used to be labeled Fender Modern Player. So I guess you just you can't just pigeonhole them. You got to look at them all. A lot of these are great guitars and a lot of them are poor guitars. And you will find the rule does hold true. You get what you pay for. And the poor guitars are the ones that are really cheap. And if you want one of the nicer ones, you're going to probably have to spend three, four hundred dollars for it. The, these back in the day were three. But like I say, back in the day, they get the really nice ones. Now they're more around the four range, three to four range. Um, the range that, that 
Fender Maxis, you know, used to be probably 10, 15 years ago. <clears throat> so anyways, that's it. Um, I hope I cleared a few things up for some people that are shopping. Hopefully I didn't make it more confusing. Uh, down below, I'll answer any questions. You know, I have no problems with that. And then again, as I said, I am not an expert, but I have bought a lot of guitars that I've learned some things and I'm happy to share. You have a good one. Yeah. <laughs>